Hi, and today we're going to be doing some free-to-play drafting over on my secondary account of Kamigawa Neon Dynasty because, well, I think this is one of the most important sets you can be drafting if you are a free-to-play or budget player. Uh, so what do you say we get in there and do some of the thing? There we go. There's our quick draft. But before we get into all that, take just a moment and do all those YouTube things so I don't have to be awkward about it. As you can see over on the free-to-play account, I've built up enough to do four different drafts. Today we are going to start number one and getting right into it here. Of course, I am going to change the view. Uh, Long Reach of Night is, uh, is the highest rated card or the Shrine. I think, of course, I'm going to have to take the rare here for this particular account. And look at that, a second rare just like that. Isn't that a beautiful thing for a free-to-play player? Um, so the gravy train has ended. Uh, my intention here is to draft into uh, green-white enchantments as much as possible. Uh, but that doesn't mean I'm not going to go for value along the way. Uh, Acquisition Octopus or Covert Technician? Um, I think Covert Technician is a more valuable card for a free-to-play player. So that is where I'm going to go with that. Um, Chico, that is, that is definitely our enchantment build showing right there. We will snatch that up for sure. And uh, let's see here, pick five, we're down to one uncommon. Uh, Invigorating Hot Springs is not terrible. Uh, Moon Snare Specialist, also a pretty good card. Neither one really particularly good for the enchantment deck that I am, uh, am really trying to build. Uh, so I think I'm just gonna go for value here on the Invigorating Hot Springs. Uh, I have a total of three packs uh, of Kamigawa on this account. Uh, so definitely looking to expand things a little bit. Uh, what, what do we want to do here? Uh, Swimmer Skill Koi is definitely really good. Uh, the Rito Sentinel is, is far less so. Uh, or do we take Terrarium? That's that's almost always a good card, honestly. Hmm, tough choices here, honestly. I think I'm just gonna go generally good with Terrarium. Uh, or, oh man, Coiling Stalker? Yeah, that... That, I think is a stronger card overall. So we will go with that. Oh, look at that. Our third rare of the draft at pick seven in a mirror box. Very nice. Uh, the preserver would be very, very nice. Careful cultivation is not terrible, um, but you just can't pass the rares as a budget player. Uh, Historian's Wisdom. If Enchanted Parmit is a creature with greatest power among creatures on the field, battlefield, draw a card. Um, that's that's not terrible. And uh, I think I will go ahead and pick up the uncommon there. It's tough when you're kind of playing back or um, trying to play catch up on a set when you weren't around to originally draft it. Uh, Discover the Impossible or Colossal Sky Turtle. Um, do we go blue green enchantments? That could be, that could be a very interesting possibility. And let's see here. Now we are all down to the commons. I think we are going to take golden tail of this, uh, disciple. And here, Jakai trainee or harmonious emergence. Neither one of those is, is super, super good. Uh, Futurist Sentinel is, is not bad, uh, but I am not trying to build the vehicles deck today. I am trying to build Enchantress. Um, so I guess we'll go with the Trainee here. 
Ah, uh, there we go. Favor. And look at that, the uncommon wield. That's not bad. And uh, yeah, Swamp. I hate those like entirely dead picks. Uh, Crucible, Windmill Slam. Gotta take that rare. Uh, what do we got here? Essence Capture, Uprising Renegade, or Historian's Wisdom. Neither of these are super, super strong. Um, Modern Age, Preserver, all really good cards. Voltage Surge is kind of out of color for us. Do we take the Preserver here over an Uncommon? Or do we take the Exemplar? I think we're going to take Exemplar. I don't know, Spirited Companion. So strong. Yeah, I think we're going to go Spirit of Companion. I think it's uh, technically the weaker card, but not by much. Uh, Leech Gauntlet, Searchlight Companion, both very good for potential artifact builds. Covert Technician, probably... Well, no, Leech Gauntlet technically is, is the best card in the pack, uh, followed possibly by Exemplar pretty tough here. I think, I think I'm going to go with the Exemplar. Maybe. Yeah, that's where I'm going to go. Uh, this is uh, Touch the Spirit Realm. Absolute windmill slam for us. That is fantastic. Uh, thirst for knowledge or a shrine. Tough choice. There's really nothing here for us. Uh, Imperial Oath isn't terrible, but it's not great either. Maybe, maybe I take the shrine here? Or an uncharted haven could be very nice. if we needed the fixing, but I'm not thinking we're gonna need the fixing. So yeah, okay, I'm gonna take the shrine on value. And we got another shrine or the Asari captain, which I kind of want for the collection because uh, I need a fourth one on that and it doesn't come in the jumping packs. How weird is that? Um, yeah, that's, that's where I'm gonna go. And let's see here, Mechanaut is pretty good. We are getting a lot of late uh, uncommon picks here. Thirst for Knowledge or Mechanaut. Tough choice, tough choice. Uh, I think I'm gonna go Thirst for Knowledge just on the idea that eventually through Brothers War, Artifacts are going to go way up in, in general value. Uh, Regent's Authority is pretty terrible. Brute Suit isn't bad. Mech Hanger? Mech Hanger is definitely the strongest card here, even though it doesn't particularly suit my deck. Uh, whenever you discard a card, you may exile that card from your graveyard. Um, okay, that does not do a whole lot for me. Imperial Subduer, on the other hand, might be pretty decent here. Uh, so yeah, I think that's where we're gonna go. Modern Age. As much as I am, am not playing Blue, it is, it is definitely the correct pick here. Um, yep, okay, that's, that's where I went, Modern Age. Uh, Grafted Growth, Searchlight Companion, just on card advantage. Seems good. Ambitious Assault is, is very nice. Spell Pierce is definitely a card I want for my collection, although it has, like, no value here. 
Uh, puzzle maker. You know what? I'm going to take the spell pierce just for the collection value. And here, I guess, mirror shell crab. And prototype. Boy, we might end up blue despite ourselves. Um, all right, farewell. Absolutely going to take that rare. No question. Uh, with whip, spinner cup, thirst for knowledge, or anchor to reality. Um, Tails is probably the best card here. Or Shigeki? Do we, do we Shigeki? I mean, I think the Exemplar, honestly, is a better card straight up than Shigeki. Somehow we have ended up building Samurai. How crazy. Sky Bless Samurai. I think, I think that's the correct pick here. It's funny how things don't always go to plan and you kind of have to, to follow the value. Um, I think we're gonna go Silver Fur Ninja here um, just to work on our Ninja deck a little bit on the free-to-play account. Uh, a pick five or rare, absolutely. Not even gonna look at the rest of the pack and try to talk myself out of it. Not gonna do it. Um, I've got multiple exemplars at this point. How many, how many do I actually have? Uh, I've got two. So a Moth Rider Patrol actually, I think, makes that better. Uh, Boon of Besiejo, I'm not, I'm not really feeling like I'm in green at this point. And I'm wondering how many copies of Moth Rider Patrol I actually own. Uh, this, of course, is keying off other data. Tell you what we're gonna do. Let's uh, let's pause for a moment. Oh well, I'm live. Uh, I'm live streaming, not uh, not digitally recording. Okay, so uh, I'm gonna take the value and uh, and move on. Jakai Naturalist, absolute windmill sign, no question. Uh, reinforced Ronin, I think we got two or three of these. I don't have any reason to think I don't need a fourth copy. Uh, so I will take that over the patrol. And uh, let's see here, Bear of Memory? Yeah, absolutely. And I'm gonna take the Uncommon here because none of this terribly helps my deck. Uh, same, same thing here. Just gonna take that value. Network terminal? Sure. I will take the network terminal. Um, Gift of Wrath is, is a slightly better card. Familiar. And a look at Island. So let's see what our deck helper wants to do. Um, yeah, they are saying go blue-white. Hanger two, and wow, did that, did that just like fall into a deck? Um, I, I think it did. I think that is what they are wanting us to run here. So uh, not a bad curve overall, not terrible on the land. Um, yeah, let's uh, let's give this a shot, see where it takes us. Uh, because we're doing an experiment here with four different drafts, I've decided to forego the actual gameplay footage on these uh, and instead just show you the conclusion of each draft. And unfortunately, I accidentally deleted the conclusion for draft number one. Uh, but you really didn't miss out on much here. I got one win and three losses. So aside from the six rares that we drafted, 
and the singular pack and 100 gems there really wasn't a lot to see here anyway sorry about that folks uh it's the only deletion so far all right here we go pack one pick one boy you, you gotta take the rares when you get it. That's, that's for sure uh let's see here i think blossoming prancer is probably where i need to go here uh another rare in pack or excuse me pick three always a nice little thing to pick up uh fall of lord condo one of the better cards here uh bamboo archer also very good. Oni Coat Anvil is, of course, the best card in the pack here, um, but it's not really what I'm going for here in these drafts, and we already own three copies of this through the new player experience, so it, it goes down in relative value very, very quickly. Uh, Exile Target Creature for Greater. Uh, each player gains control of all permits they own. Okay. Um, and you get a 1-3 defender. Wow, that is that is just remarkably um, unimpressive. Uh, so let's see here. Do we take Secluded Courtyard, which is very narrow. Uh, Spirited Companion, we have four of, so we don't need that. Uh, I am tempted to take the Archer here. Uh, it's definitely Tier 2 in the, the pack, but I think it's the strongest Tier 2 card for us, even though I'm passing some uncommons to do this. Uh, which which feels a little bad. Um, in fact, I, I think I just talked myself out of it. I think I'm going to take the Secluded Courtyard here, both for the deck and for the value. Uh, let's see here. The Merge Keeper, uh, Reinforced Ronin. I already have four Reinforced Ronin. I don't need any more. So that is a very good thing. Same with the Exemplar. We are, we are there on those. So I think I'm going to take the keeper here it's a solid green card even if it doesn't directly fit the uh enchantress theme kumano it's it's hard to say no to kumano i mean it really is kami flare is also not bad but i think uh i think we take kumano here or kimono excuse me uh do we take the smelter no we have four copies of smelter so we are we are absolutely going to pass that up do we take Ace? I think Ace is probably our strongest card here, and that way if we want to dip into vehicles a little bit, uh, we certainly could. Somehow managing to stay focused primarily on two colors here. That's, uh, that's always a nice thing. Uh, Iron Hoof Boar, the Trainee, uh, Paper Crack Decoy? Feels like it might be the best thing here, or do we go with the training? I think Boar is probably the strongest card in the pack here, uh, but I don't know how I feel about dipping so hard into red right now. Um, you know what? No. Talking yourself out of it, take the best card in the pack. And uh, right here, that is either Peerless Samurai or Mech Hanger. Uh, I'm going to take the Mech Hanger just because I don't think I have four of those now. I don't. Uh, so let me go ahead and pick up Mech Hanger. Uh, vehicles is a, a solid possible deck here to, to play into. I'm going to take the Wisdom both on the Uncommon Value and the fact that it kind of fits the theme that we're going for. Red was very wide open there. Uh, Reliquary, sure, we'll uh, we'll take Reliquary. We've got uh, we've got three uncommon lands there. Um, again, red just wide open here. Uh, if this was a more competitive draft, this is a very strong signal that red is open. Uh, Ambitious Assault, I think, is probably the best card here. Um, or maybe Comedy of Industry. Uh, yeah, I'm going to pick up the Reckless Assault, I think. Yeah, we'll go with that. And what do we got here? Uh, three commons. 
Uh, season of Renewal. Uh, yeah, that's probably the best card for us. And uh, Crackling Emergence, sure. I'll take a common over uh, a land almost any day. And Light the Way is weak, but it may actually fit the deck. Uh, pack 2, Gorogoru, gotta take the original friends. That's how value drafting works. Uh, mirror box also have to take the rare. Uh, and let's see here. Ankle Reality, Prodigy's Prototype, Oni Cole Amble, obviously the strongest card. Um, I think Prototype is probably the second best card here. So, well, Modern Age, but... Uh, or Intervention. But for value, I'm taking Prototype. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, drop that into my sideboard. Uh, Blossoming Prancer. Uh, that is copy uh, three for the free-to-play collection. Windmill Slam. Jukai Naturalist. Absolutely going to take that card when I see it. Uh, recovery Unit or Trash Bot. Or excuse me, Guide Bot. Mm, didn't mean to call you trash, brother. Sorry about that. Um, I think... I think we go Guide Bot here. Maybe? Yeah, yeah, I think that is is probably the correct. Because uh, I'm not I'm not really feeling vehicles for this deck. I mean, it could happen. But uh, yeah, I think Guide Bot is a universally good card there. Uh, Hot Shot Mechanic is, uh, is a definite there. And what do we take here? Papercraft Decoy and Peerless Samurai are probably the best cards in the pack. Uh, nope, I take that back. Uh, Coiling Stalker was kind of kind of hiding down there. Almost didn't see him. That is definitely my pick there. Uh, Sentinel? Maybe? Terrarium is probably better if I was going to be three colors. And I don't know. There's, there's probably not a zero chance that I go there. I mean, I've already got a Season of Renewal. I really can't see picking that up. So, alright. I'm going to take the Sentinel just on the value. It probably will not get played here. Uh, Ancestral Katana? Feels... Feels decent. I might accidentally go Samurai. Uh, anchor to Reality. Do I take an Anchor Reality over cards that probably won't get played in this deck? Uh, yeah, I'm going to take the value. And let's just pretty immediately throw him down there. Uh, let's see here. Network Terminal? I think is the correct player. Yeah. Um, and Shadow Walker for ninjas. Okay. And do I take a network terminal? Yeah, yeah, I take the network terminal. And I take a mountain. All right, pack three. Ooh, the Toad Rider. Absolutely I'm going to do that. Uh, let's see here. What what do we got? Tempered in Solitude, another Anchor in Reality, uh, or Many Journeys. Uh, well, actually, Gloom Shrieker is uh, is the highest rated card here in the deck. I will probably never play. So, Tempered in Solitude, uh, Repel the Vile. No, I think I take Many Journeys. That feels like the correct play. Um, I am going to go with a shrine here. I already have one of the red shrines, and for this free-to-play account, one of each is really all I'm looking to do. And uh, I think this could go very well in this deck, and the red shrine might actually wheel and give me two shrines in the deck if I go red-green. So I think that is the course of action there. Uh, discover the impossible. Do do we take the impossible, or I think we take the preserver, right? Yeah, that's one of those 
because you've got to pass the value and, uh, and take the better card. But Machiko, on the other hand, is both value and the best card available for us. So, uh, yeah, that's where we're going there. Uh, another bronze plate four. Uh, oh, no, I had iron hook four earlier. Okay. Uh, Befriend the Moss could be decent. I mean, it, it really could, uh, but I think the bronze plate is is inarguably the best card in the pack and the value. So that's what I'm taking. Uh, born to drive. Do we do we take uh, Vin Diesel? Um, I don't know. Secluded courtyard is is kind of kind of staring at me for the the creature fixing later on. Uh, but yeah, born to drive. Okay, you talked me into it. You're gonna you're gonna make me uh, build vehicles for this account. That's that's gonna happen. Uh, cudgels feels really bad. I think we take another mini journeys over over cudgels. Uh, Mechanot. Why why not? There's another secluded courtyard. My goodness. Um, but Mechanite is the better card. And, uh, Oh, no, those artifacts are going to go way up in value. Um, Alright. Oh, boy. Dramatist Puppet. Uh, Season of Renewal. Boy, so many of these cards are just completely situational. Um, I mean, I, I kind of feel the argument that Shadow Walker is the best card in the pack. I mean, obviously, I'm not playing black, uh, and I, I have already uh, sacrificed a pick to pick up a Shadow Walker um, and a Toad Rider. Uh, I don't, I don't think I have enough time to switch over to Ninjutsu, though. Um, so, do I take a another Season of Renewal or an Anchor to Reality? I think Anchor just for value. I mean, obviously, I am not playing that card in this deck. Uh, let's take a couple of those things out. Hey, look at that! Our Shrine Wield! Uh, and I don't really feel like I'm giving up much here. I mean, Lucky Offering, really? No, I'll, I'll go with that Shrine. And, uh, let's see here. Season of Renewal, Return to Action, Comedy of Industry. I guess I take the Season of Renewal here. It doesn't feel great, but the others feel really bad. Um, I'm going to take another anchor to reality, just so I eventually end up that, like, now I have three copies on this collection, and I'm not going to have to worry about it much longer. Uh, planer. And Graphic Growth. Okay, that might accidentally make the deck. Ah, uh, I have cut, uh, Mirror, well, I want to cut Mirror Box, because I don't think I have any real legendaries but one. Uh, well, no, actually, both my shrines are legendary too. Uh, Mirror Box could actually be worth playing. Um, Caesar in a network terminal. Kyoto Solo. That's, that's the card that... Uh, is missing from the equation here. Uh, another target permanent gains indestructible for as long as you control this. Uh, it gets plus five. Wow. Um, I don't know why I wouldn't splash for this, honestly. Um, so I'm going to cut a network terminal and play the mirror box. And uh, we're going to call this right here a deck. Uh, it may not actually be a deck, but but we're going to try it, because um, I think Machiko obviously splashes very well, and Kyode, uh, uh, I guess, that's the way I'm going to say it. Uh, this feels very splashable. Um, let, me, let me take one last look at uh, the white cards that I'm not running. Uh, Hotshot Mechanic feels like a possibility. Uh, as an addition cost against the spell, you may exile any number of green cards from your hand. Choose target creature with mana value 
less than X, search your library for a creature card with the same name as a creature. Yeah, that's a that's a big no for limited. I don't know why they even have that in here, honestly. Um, wow, they're giving it a 4-3 from, uh, from the AI rating. Uh, but it, it does get an absolute zero on the pro rating. So, yeah, making that switch feels pretty good there. Uh, the rest of this is pretty situational. Um, so, slight alteration. This is going to be the final deck, and uh, we'll, we'll run it out there and see what happens. Not surprisingly, this deck did pretty darn well with a 3-3 three, three, uh, win. That gives us a 40% win ratio overall in this series. Let's go ahead and claim up the prize. Just a single pack, but 300 gems really helps out quite a bit. Uh, always nice for a free-to-play player to convert gold to gems. All right, draft number three here in the series, and I have quite a dilemma off the first pick. Uh, Ryu as the rare and naturalist as uh, an uncommon. Um, I, I gotta say, I'm actually really kind of uh, thrown on this. Um, the pro rating on both is actually pretty similar. Uh, I also have a patchwork automation in here. Um, and neither of these cards should wheel. I mean, honestly, they, they should. Um, Wow, this is this is such a mental beating. Uh, it's not even 8 a.m. where I am recording. Um, well, I, I think I gotta do what value drafters do. I, I gotta take the rare um, and, and hate myself in the morning. Uh, Born to Drive uh, Shrine. I think I think the Shrine here is uh, definitely the better pick here, both for the deck and uh, for the long-term viability of the collection. Uh, Replicant Specialist is probably the highest rated card here. Uh, Oni Colt Anvil, of course, also very, very nice. Not a lot going on here that does a lot for uh, what I'm trying to do in the long run. So I think I am just gonna take value and see what happens here. Um, Delicious malfunction or when we were young. Both of these cards are very situational and uh, and kind of terrible. Um, I guess I guess when we were young is is potentially better. So taking value there mostly. Uh, high speed hover bike feels like the correct play here. I think we have enough silver for a masters. We do. Um, so even though I think that's the better card, uh, High Speed Hover Bike is definitely the better pick for me and this free-to-play collection. Uh, Prodigy Prototype feels really solid. Uh, Dragon Spark Reactor is situationally a better card, but I already own two of those and only one of the prototypes. So if I do eventually want to build vehicles, which I'm not saying it's a good idea, um, that is the better card here. And there's nothing, well, I guess maybe Commune to, with Spirits is, is not bad. Uh, Synthesizer also not bad. But uh, I think the clear value pick here is Prototype. And uh, let's see here. Awakened Awareness is situational at best. Dockside Chef uh, is uh, uh, arguably the best card in the pack. Uh, Spirited Companion also very good, but I already have a four pack on that. Um, so that definitely goes way down in value for me. So I think I'm gonna take that here. We're, we're a little all over the place so far. Uh, Blossoming Sands feels pretty good, but of course we have four playables on this. Um, just from our new player experience, of course they're not the Kamigawa. Um, so I'm thinking Runaway Trash Bot is, is the way to go. And alright, so now we are down to just commons. 
Uh, Simeon Sling or Coiling Stalker, probably the best cards in uh, the pack here. Suit up. Uh, I mean, I guess we could maybe. No, I think Coiling Stalker is just universally better and uh, and worth picking up. The uh, the Shrine Steward could be good, but um, now I think. I think we take the Stalker here. It's just the universally better card. Uh, Season of Renewal is maybe the best card in this pack. Uh, Heir of Ancient Fang. Yeah, that's that's uh, probably universally better. We've got another Shrine Steward, um, but I think I think we're gonna go with the Ancient Fang there. And what do we got going on here? Um, there is there is not a lot here that's awesome. So I think we're gonna go Thundersteel Colossus. Uh, it's weird how this is is kind of pulling me in towards that vehicle build. Uh, but of course, um, artifacts are generally a good backup plan. Uh, Network Disruptor, which I have three of, or Katsuni Ace. I think we're going to start considering that, uh, that vehicle plan. Kind of a backup here. Uh, Regent's Authority is probably... It's an enchantment creature. Yeah, I, I guess... I guess that's the better card for the collection over uh, Planar. Uh, I hate to start picking up black cards at this point. Uh, so I'm going to go Commune with Spirits, even though um, the other card was uh, arguably much better. Uh, Hinata. Why not? Um, Shrine is probably just as good and it would be a second shrine, but I couldn't have them both in place because of legendary. So uh, I'm going to take the rare here. It's a really close call, to be honest. Uh, hey, look at that. Uh, this is this is terrible for limited, um, but I am going to take it because rares are hard to come by, and that also ensures that we we make value on this. Uh, because we are pack two, and I think that gives us a third rare. So yeah, we are we are guaranteed value now as long as we rare draft in pack three. Uh, Banishing slash feels like the windmill slam here. Uh, it's it's definitely locking us in towards green or uh, in towards white because it's it's not splashable. And uh, I don't know uh, wisdom. Uh, or awareness. Neither one of those is super, super great. Uh, lethal exploit, probably the best card in the pack, but I'm definitely not playing back black. So uh, then we're talking about terrarium. And uh, do I take a terrarium over a wisdom? Uh, no, I think I'm going to take the Wisdom here just because of the uncommon value. And, uh, oh wow, look at that, another Uprising. Um, so that puts us at five rares in, uh, or, no, it puts us uh, guaranteed five rares, four picked uh, at this point. And let's see here, Bocijo is, is very, very good, uh, but Roadside Reliquary uh, could be potentially really good in this deck, so I'm, I'm taking it. Uh, Heiko Yakazaki, it feels like the best card in the pack. Preserver, also really, really good. Um, I am very strong in red, but most of it is my red-white stuff I've got going on here. Uh, hmm. So I think I take. Now I gotta take uh, Yakazami. Sorry to uh, my Asian following out there for horribly mispronouncing these cards. Uh, Acquisition Octopus just on value. We got to do it. 
Um, let's see here. Bamboo Archer or Repel? Both of these. Very, very good. Um, I think I take the Archer just on the trying to build enchantments. Uh, Secluded Courtyard, very situational. Simeon Swing, probably the best card here. Uh, followed by Infiltrator, but I'm not playing black. So I think I probably take Web Spinner Cuff here. We'll try and lean into green a little bit. Discover the Impossible. Is that worth uh, giving up either uh, an Ace or an Air? Uh, two drops feel really, really important here over an instant that isn't going to get played. So I think I'm going to take the ace here. Uh, hmm. Harmonious it could be could be good, but I think safekeeping might be the better play here. Honestly, um, a good a good combat trick might be just what the deck needs. Uh, mech hanger. Yeah, we're going to take mech hanger. And uh, sure, I'll take a Spell Pierce. That's always a nice pickup. And sure, why not an Island? Um, ooh, Surge Hacker Mech, most definitely. Um, that makes a lot of that uh, vehicle stuff far more interesting. Um, oh, yeah, another one. Uh, Biting Palm Ninja versus the Naturalist. Um, I, I've, I've got to take the ninja. I mean, I, I really do. This is my second naturalist I'm passing when I'm trying to force enchantments. Um, but you, you just can't pass up rares as as a value drafter. Um, and my ninja deck is, is actually uh, starting to look potentially very playable. So I'm going to have to go with that. Uh, I already have my Silver Fur Masters. Uh, Master Splinter is, is all booked up for me. Uh, Futurist Operative or Blade Bazaar. Uh, but he, he is looking really, really good here. Um, yeah, yeah, I'm gonna have, I'm gonna have to take the value here. And uh, Ronin, we've got full pack on. So I think I'm gonna pick up my first Blue Shrine here. Uh, mostly because this Enchantress deck that I am trying to force also becomes a potentially good Shrine deck. Um, and having at least one copy of each of these is very beneficial. Uh, Spirit of Companion, we are full up on. Uh, Katsumi Preserver might be the best card here. Uh, Sunblade Samurai, also very good. Uh, it, it's a tough call to say which one of those is better. Um, I would say on average most people would take the Preserver over the Sunblade Samurai, but I'm not sure that necessarily makes it the correct call. Um, I think I am going to take the Uncommon here just for the value. Um, another shrine, and I have two red shrines here, so I think I take the prototype here and uh, see if maybe we can end up in a vehicle deck. This, uh, this could be a thing. And uh, Anchor to Reality, I have four of those, but it could actually be pretty good in this uh, if we do end up playing vehicles. Tough call there. As you can see, I'm, I'm really struggling with this. Uh, I don't think adding to my vault here is, is necessarily useful. I think I'm probably better off taking a good card for my collection as opposed to um, adding to the vault with the Anchor to Reality. I don't think Anchor to Reality adds enough to this package to justify giving up a common. Uh, and now that I've said that a lot, let me let me really think about that. Um, yeah, I think I think we take Katana. Uh, Reinforce Ronin again. We've got all those. Uh, Golden Tail Disciple does multiple multiple things for this deck and my collection. 
Uh, future is Sentinel, not not as good, I don't think. So I'm gonna take Golden Tail. We're definitely white at this point. There's there's really no question about that. Uh, I now have all my katanas, so that that goes down in value for me, even though it is clearly the best card here. Um, so I think we go prototype. Um, or do we? Do I take the ambusher? I mean, I'm probably not playing ambusher in this deck. Um, or, or do we take artificer? I think we're going to take artificer. Uh, I mean, I know that also supports uh, artifacts. But this does pretty much the same thing. So, yeah, I think, I think that's where I'm going. Uh, Sentinel. Sentinel feels like the correct pick here, mostly from a value standpoint. Uh, Befriend the Moths, obviously uh, a really, really good card. Uh, Sunblade, Samurai. Um, you know what? I'm going to take the Samurai here uh, and pass the Uncommon. That is, you don't see me do a whole lot. Uh, Regent's Authority, I think, is the best card for us here. Although, honestly, I think the AI is probably going to end up uh, throwing that back. I just don't have enough red in this deck to really... Uh, although, we do have some strong samurai stuff going on here. Um, and neither of these cards is really doing a whole lot for us. So yeah, I'm gonna pick up the Ronin here. If nothing else, it adds three points to my vault. Uh, Sunblade Samurai is a windmill slam there and the best card in the pack. Uh, Planar Incision, as it is not a swamp. Um, and I guess we'll take a mountain. There we go. All right, so just jumping to the end of deck building, uh, the AI wanted me to go all in on the Samurai and uh, play both copies of Uprising. But generally speaking, uh, I think uh, Prototype is just a stronger card uh, in, in a vacuum. And the fact that I have uh, some pilot and vehicle synergies going on here, uh, I decided to make that swap. And um, also running Mech Hanger over one of the generic basic lands. So we are going a little heavier blue. They just wanted me to splash for Hinata and uh, Replicant Specialist. But honestly, I think this gives me a stronger deck overall. So we're going to give it a shot here. So obviously this deck did very well, uh, especially considering the amount of value that we got in the draft itself. Uh, no double packs, but still 650 gems is nothing to sneeze at, uh, particularly for a free-to-play account. All right, in draft number four of the series, uh, we are gonna go through it here. Obviously, taking the rare pack one figure. Uh, let's see here, pack two. Uh, Born to Drive would not be a terrible thing for us to add to a, uh, a vehicles deck, which honestly seems to be coming together. Rabbit battery, wow, I don't have a full set of rabbit batteries um, for this account, so I think that is the, the easy pick there. Uh, another rare, that's, uh, that's number two out of three picks. That is, uh, that is pretty strong. Uh, Twisted Embrace is the best card in the pack according to the AI. Um, and it would appear the pros would uh, consider likewise. I think though, what I pick up here, sorry Captain, I've got a full boat on, so I think I wanna go for the shrine here. And uh, I've already got two red shrines, so I'm not sure that I pick up a third. Tails is very, very strong. That uh, that may have to be the pick that I go with here. Uh, Fang of Shigeki also uh, very strong. In fact, it's it's kind of tough. Um, I guess I would go with Tails here. 
and uh, Kamano is probably the best card uh, in the pack. Although it looks like the pros are leaning more towards Simeon Sling. I'm not sure I agree with that at all. Uh, Covert Technician looks like a pretty strong pick here overall. Uh, and it does add value to the collection where I already have a full set of Kimono. Uh, kimono. Words. Uh, high Speed Hoverbike is uh, the obvious pick here. Absolutely want that for a variety of reasons. Uh, Reinforced Ronin, I have a full playset of. Runaway Trash Bot, on the other hand, might be the easy pick here. And uh, Smelter, we have everything on that. So we are looking at maybe Steelbreaker. I think, uh, I think that is probably the best card here. And uh, we, we're still kind of all over the place. Uh, we haven't really settled into a color. So I feel like taking the best card is, is probably the right thing to do. Um, Searchlight Companion feels like the easy pick here. That's copy number four for my collection. I like that a lot. Uh, Keeper. Hmm. That's, uh, that's an interesting pro-choice there. Terrarium also very good. Um, I think I think we'll go with the Keeper, and maybe we're leaning in towards red here. Uh, a second Keeper is pretty strong. And I guess the Papercraft Decoy is the way to go here. Um, I will definitely take a common over a basic land. And speaking of basic lands, um, all right, a, uh, a copy of Farewell. That is, I think, rare number three. Is that correct? Yep, that is uh, that is number three. Very nice. Uh, let's see, we have a blue shrine uh, technician or long reach of night uh, roadside reliquary is uh according to this the best card in the pack but i have three of those uh long reach of night feels pretty good here i don't know that we end up playing black but it's certainly in the conversation so far so although i don't normally go black i uh i think i will here uh, Umazawa, uh, a second copy on that for ninjas. Not a bad idea. That brings to four. Four rares already on this. Pretty, uh, pretty awesome. Uh, Twisted Embrace is, uh, the highest rated card. Let's take a look at the uncommons. Uh, Malicious uh, Malfunction is a bit narrow. Uh, Unforgiven One, on the other hand, is a pretty strong pick. I think we will go ahead and grab that in the event that we go black. Prancer uh, feels feels pretty strong. Uh, Merge Keeper, to be honest, I'm probably not green at this point, but I guess it could happen. Um, I think I would rather have a second copy of and a fourth copy of uh, Prancer. And what do we got? We, we're full up on Wisdoms. Uh, Sentinel, we've got two. Is there anything here worth taking over an Uncommon? I think maybe Tails. Uh, I really do. Yep, that's, uh, that's where I'm going to go with that pick. And uh, let's see, Anchored Reality, we have everything we could possibly need on that. Uh, Walking Skyscraper feels like a decent pick here, honestly. Especially given the fact that we have some other uh, artifacts going on. I don't know about Bronze Cudgel, though. Uh, we could take Safekeeping. Or Kami of Restless Shadow feels pretty situational, honestly. Short Circuit is bleh. Ambitious Assault is, uh, well, maybe. That is that is a strong possibility. Maybe not as strong. Um, we'll go with Safekeeping. That's that's number four for the collection. I think that's a pretty 
strong card to have. Hot Shot Mechanic is definitely worth the take for us here. Uh, I feel like we're not doing a whole lot for Enchantress in this, uh, and that's not necessarily unexpected as it's the fourth draft. Um, we've got the Blue Shrine, so what are we looking at here? Uh, Armor Guard Familiar feels pretty good, although I'm probably not in blue. Uh, Reckoner's Bargain. Huh. Uh, Kami of Restless Shadows. I'm not, I'm not playing ninjas, but I may play ninjas outside of this. So that might be a decent card to go ahead and pick up. And I don't really think I want to play Mill Shrines. Um, it just doesn't feel that strong. So I think I'm going to go with the familiar. Uh, when in doubt, Rapid is not a bad thing in this set. Network Terminal makes that point. Clawing Torment could be a good pick here. Because I, I am very strongly red, uh, but I'm not... Not huge on Unstoppable Ogre. Uh, when it ETBs, target creature cannot block. I mean, that's not terrible. A 4-1 for 3. Okay, I've talked myself. We're going to go Unstoppable. Another Tails. Or a Tamiel. Or an Omgard. Um, I guess I guess I take Tails. I think this will be my first copy, so I no longer really have to say that. Uh, Puppeteer? And, uh, that doesn't feel awesome by any means. Um, I think I'm going to go commune with spirit here for that long-term perspective. Uh, disruptive protocol, obviously that's not going to get played in this deck. And uh, three points for the vault. All right, pack three, pick one. Surge hacker, Mac, man, that vehicle's deck is starting to look pretty strong there. Uh, Patchwork Automation, yeah, that's pretty much an automatic pick there. And, uh, and let's see here, Guidebot is really strong, Seismic Wave is, is maybe just a touch stronger, particularly since I am looking at being red in this deck. That, uh, that feels like the right choice here. Uh, High-speed hover bike, absolutely going to take that. And another unforgiven one. Uh, also, Story Weaver or Bosijo reaches Skyward. Let's see, uh, unforgiven one or Bosijo. Um, I think at this point I'm probably stronger green, maybe. And I already have an Unforgiven one. Yeah, I think I'm going to go uh, Reaches. And let's see here. Do I take Story Weaver? Sure, I'll take an Uncommon. Just because it's an Uncommon. Uh, let's see here. Discover the Impossible feels a little less good. Prosperous Thief, on the other hand, feels pretty strong. Collection, it might even get played today. Uh, is there anything here I take over the Sentinel? Uh, Infiltrator could could be it. Uh, that is that is probably twice the card of Sentinel. And I don't know, like I'm just not feeling mill at the moment. So yeah, I think I'm going to go the Infiltrator. Uh, born to Drive. Do we do it? Do do we do Born to Drive right here for the vehicles deck? Um, Season of Renewal is the other possibility. Uh, this gets creature or enchantment. Um, 
that's a that's a tough choice. Not gonna lie. Um, yeah, I'm gonna have to do board to drive. It doesn't help this deck at all. Uh, Sunblade Samurai is the best card in the pack. Uh, Brute Suit is not far behind. Uh, tough, tough choices. Tough choices. Um, I think I'm going to go ahead and pick up the Brute Suit just for diversity in, uh, in our decks. Let's see here. That... Uh, Shattered Air just doesn't feel awesome. Uh, Ancestral Katana, we actually have four of. I guess, I guess we take the Ninja here. And uh, Moon Shaper does not feel great. Uh, Trainee feels a little better for this deck. And uh, I need them both. For the collection, honestly, so that's that's where we're gonna go there. Uh, I'm gonna take a late pick. Story weave, well, explosive entry looks so good. Um, yeah, I'm gonna take that. Take the better card, and uh, at this point, we're very heavy red and green. So uh, yeah. Planar Indecision feels good, and uh, Forest, sure, why not? So I have to say, pretty unexpectedly, the AI is suggesting that I go uh, black-green, and not knowing very much about this archetype, uh, and honestly feeling like it's, uh, it's very uh, lacking in uh, the current standard. Black-green is just, it's just one of the trailing archetypes. Uh, but I'm going to trust the AI here and take this for a spin and see what happens. All the wins and, and rares aside, the really cool thing about this is we did four drafts and we basically built an Enchantress deck uh, just from the new player experience cards and what we were able to draft. Obviously, this deck isn't done, and we've got a whole nother year of Kamigawa to make something like this better. Uh, obviously, another copy of Naturalist would be awesome. Uh, for Generous Visitors, uh, I would cut all the Blossoms and the Steward uh, for Generous Visitors in a heartbeat and just top out here at the four slot. Um, there's also some one-ofs and things like that in here, like Wedding Announcement. I mean, it kind of fits and it kind of doesn't. It is what it is. Uh, Wandering Emperor, it's hard to say that doesn't go in any deck containing white mana, um, but you could easily cut that. Uh, the Shrine package, you could cut out of this for a more focused enchantment-based aggro, and I wouldn't say you were wrong, uh, but for what, what I have at the moment, this is a very serviceable deck, and I'm very happy to show this, even though we made significant choices to go longer term, and not short term during our drafts. Uh, we pa passed multiple copies of Naturalist. Uh, I think we passed at least one copy of Generous Visitor, as well as uh, the artifact whose name escapes me at the moment, but we'll talk about it in just a second. That gets bigger for every other artifact that you play. Uh, all of those should be top picks, but we pass them up in order to take rares. And by making artifacts kind of our backup plan when we weren't able to force Enchantress, we kind of out of nowhere built a pretty serviceable vehicles-based deck out of blue and white. Uh, multiple Surge Hacker mechs, uh, a Mind Leading mech that we opened. Uh, lots of, of really good stuff here that uh, I'm not sure this deck will ever be really awesome. I don't know that you necessarily need to try and build this deck, but this is the kind of happy accidents that will uh, provide variety to your deck building uh, just by having a game plan as you go into drafts and knowing what you want to do. And speaking of that artifacts as a game plan, we ended up with 66 drafted artifacts here that didn't fit into any of the other two decks that we talked about. Uh, actually, I take that back. Uh, we did use Mind Link Mech in there, 
and uh, I think we use the reality anchor. So let me let me pull those back out. We're still looking at plus 60 cards here. Um, just really, really good. And although we don't have a home for these just yet, with exceptions of like maybe Rabbit Battery that have some pretty obvious homes, um, all of these may go up in value when Dominaria United comes out and almost certainly when we see Brothers War. Anything that has artifact is almost certainly going to go up in value and we got all of these cards basically for free. And with all that having been said, don't forget, smash that like button like Ronnie J. Wood. And no matter where in the world you are watching this from, I hope you have a magical day. And until next time, I'll see you in the arena.